Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week we're going to continue our look at the network setup for your server and we're going to look specifically this week at the idea of port forwarding. Now if you look at a basic network setup, and I've got the airport utility up here just to do this demonstration, uh, what you'll typically have is you have the internet, which is where you're able to access websites and things that are outside your network. And then you have everything inside your network, which would be back here. And then in between that, you usually have a router. Now the router basically, as we talked about last time, handles the translation of addresses and things, but it also allows traffic uh, to either be stopped from coming into your network or allows traffic in and out of your network. And so the router here does a, a few things for us. Uh, first, the router functions as a physical firewall. And what that means is that it does not allow any traffic into my network that I don't want to allow. So if someone's trying to hack into my computer, uh, they can't do that if my router doesn't have any ports open for them to hack through. In other words, my router will actually block them and keep, that, keep them out. It will also keep certain services out. And so what that means is there are certain services on my server, which sits behind this router, that can't be used either unless I uh, open specific ports. So port forwarding is, is allowing uh, traffic from the internet to get through your router into your network and allows traffic from your network to get through your router out to the internet. Now ports are basically tunnels through your firewall. And so basically what happens is, is your server uh, creates little tunnels, little ports, so that information can get in and out of your network to the internet and back through. And each port basically represents a certain service. So depending on the service, it'll have a certain port number that will be sort of the door that lets that traffic in and out. So forwarding is opening those ports, sending traffic to certain services through that port to other things. That's how that works. Now, when you look at port forwarding and you look at this uh, idea of uh, NAT, and NAT really is just network address translation, uh, what that does, what the NAT part does, is the NAT is an agent between your local uh, uh, network and your internet. And so what the NAT does is it uh, basically communicates uh, over ports to that internet, like I told you before. Now, the different ports that it uses to communicate are TCIP, usually, and UDP. Uh, TCIP is a transmission control protocol. And it basically allows, uh, allows you to uh, establish a connection with another host outside your network so that all your transmissions come across a stream where the information comes in the order that it's sent going back and forth and it delivers it that way. And it's probably the most efficient way to do it because it guarantees that that traffic will get there the way that it was sent. A UDP is user uh, datagram uh, protocol. And basically what it does is it doesn't uh, guarantee that. It just sends everything in one packet all at once. And there's really no guarantee that it gets there or not. So it's the least efficient of the two. But certain services use certain ports. And so you need to know that as you're looking at uh, port forwarding. Now, one other thing you need to understand is that for some of you, uh, you may not have a router at all. You may have a front-facing server. You may be, uh, have it on a hosted service or maybe you're... Uh, uh, your server is actually connected directly to the internet. In that case, all of the ports on your server are open to the internet, which means anybody uh, can try to get through those ports uh, into your server. So what you'll typically use is a software firewall in that case, which does the same thing as a router. It just blocks the services from getting in and out uh, of your network. So I wanted to show you that to give you kind of a visual illustration of how uh, networking works and how port forwarding works so that you're understanding what's going on when you're doing this. So let me just put this down here for a second and let's go back into our server. Now, if you haven't chosen a router yet, as I told you earlier, it's to your advantage to choose an Apple router. So I would, I would recommend the Airport Extreme Base Station uh, because you don't need uh, the time capsule has a hard drive in it. And you really don't need that hard drive with a server. You just need the actual router. And so that's what I would recommend if you haven't chosen one yet. And it's mainly for this reason. Uh, the server application can actually manage your router and it makes it much easier for you to open and close ports because as you open services on your server, it automatically opens and closes those ports for you. And it does it without you having to restart the router. So it has a, those, those two advantages are big advantages because without having to restart the router, you don't kick anybody off the network. It just opens those ports for you. And also the ability to manage it automatically that when you open a service, it finds the port to manage uh, really makes it, uh, like I said, a great, uh, great advantage to have. Now, if you look here on the sidebar, I do have an Airport Extreme base station, and you can see it's showing up right here. I've named it Office. If I click on this, it will basically uh, go in and show 
uh, my router, but it's going to ask for my password in order for me to manage the services through it. So let me put in my password information here. Okay, once I put the password in there, I click on Manage. And what it's going to do is connect to my router so that it can manage it, and it reads the settings that I have on my router. So immediately what you see is all the different public services that I have available, and these are things that I've opened ports for in order to share. And you can see all of those different services that are on there. Some of them I created myself, and some of them were there from a previous install of server. I just never went in and changed the ports or deleted them. Uh, to show you what that looks like on your actual router, let me open um, the airport utility here for a minute. Now once inside your airport utility, if you just come over to network, this is where all of the port settings are on your router. They all show up here. And when I'm inside my uh, server application, they match. Uh, if I just slide this over, you, what you can see is you can see here's the services like calendar. I've got calendar here, contacts, I've got contacts. So these match because my server is reading them from my router and when it opens and closes services, it reads it back to the router and takes care of those settings for me. Let me slide this back over. Now, as you look at this and uh, get an idea for it, you can also set these up manually. So those of you that have uh, third-party routers, you're not going to have the advantage of having the server application manage your router for you. So you'll need to actually go into your software for your router to set up those settings for yourself. Uh, let me give you an example of what it looks like to set those up. We're going to edit this VPN one for you. So what you would do is you would come into your router, uh, depending on your software, and you would uh, give a description for the service and some of these are actually built into the Airport Extreme base station. Uh, you would put in the different ports that are needed for the service, like here's some UDP ports, TCP ports, and this is both the public side, which is the outward facing, and the private side, which is internally, and you put your server's IP address in there, and then you would save it, and that would set up that port. Now you would do that, like I said, for every service, and usually your router would need to reboot every time you put those in there. But I wanted to let you know that that's there. And I'll be giving you the ports as I take you through the various services to make it easier for you so you don't have to always look those up. But that's how that would work as you're doing it uh, on your router. So let me just put this down here. So back in here, uh, like I said, we can do various things with this. I can actually delete uh, services from right within here, and it'll, it'll take care of it on the router. Or I can even add some. Let's just click plus. So I can add different services. And so these are showing me the services that it hasn't opened yet that I can add. So if I wanted to, for instance, add uh, the mail service, see how it's applying the settings. And it's writing those to my router right now. My router isn't being restarted. And so now mail uh, will be added in here. You can see there's mail right there. It's added to uh, my router because that's an open port now. In fact, if I come back to the airport utility, and if we go into the services here, uh, we should see, and it may just take a minute for it to show up, we should see mail in here somewhere. Let's see here. Not yet. So probably have to cancel it and then probably go back into it and then go back over to network and then go down and see if we can find mail. There it is. Mail showing up right there. So the great thing, like I said, is that it does this for you automatically. Let's put this back down back and forth. And the same is true when I get rid of it. I can just delete it by clicking the minus. It's applying the settings, which, mean, which means it's writing that to my router, and it's getting rid of that port. So that port is no longer open and exposed to the internet. It's, it's gone. Now, the other thing I can do is add my own services manually if I want to. I can come here and say other. And right in here, I can add a service name and the ports that need to be opened, and then server will handle those for me as well. And if I just cancel this, you can see I've done that for services like uh, own cloud I've set up and keyboard maestro, different things that I've set up myself. Uh, I've put those in here, and server actually takes care of opening and closing those ports for me. So that gives you an idea of port forwarding, and hopefully that gives you kind of the concepts behind it and how to do it, and also shows you how convenient it is to manage it through OS X server. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.